Everything we do in the treatment of breast cancer has good news and bad news. Everything we do has potential side effects. And so one of the questions that I'm asked is, Dr. Harness, what are the side effects of the radiation therapy that I may need for my invasive or in situ breast cancer? Well, first of all, we have to remember, as I pointed out before, and also my colleague, uh, Dr. Afsham Forzani has shared with you, there are different kinds of radiation therapy. But the two big categories of radiation therapy, at least right now here in the U.S., are whole breast radiation therapy and partial breast radiation therapy. Coming on the horizon is clearly going to be more intraoperative uh, single fraction radiation therapy. And so, Probably the biggest side effects that we worry about, and I'm going to focus right now on whole breast radiation therapy, the thing that's so visible to the patients are, of course, are the reddening of the skin. And as I tell patients, you're going to have a really bad day at the beach, meaning the typical sort of first degree burns that you get from a really bad sunburn. The reaction of patients really varies by their normal skin color, how fair they are, how dark they are, et cetera. Just like when you go to the beach, you, we know that there's a real variation in sunburning, if you will, from uh, exposure you know, to the sun. So what are the other side effects of uh, radiation therapy? Well, one is it tends to make the breast fibrotic, if you will, in other words, firmer. Now, for some women, that's really good news, but and for others, it, 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 it's disturbing because the breast feels a lot firmer. The skin around the breast becomes somewhat thicker. Um, there's always been worries in the past uh, about any damage to the ribs or the underlying lungs. And today, with three-dimensional planning by the radiation therapist, we've really been able to minimize sort of the scatter effect that goes on to just beneath the breast which is to the ribs and to the lungs. In the past, we've been worried on the patient's left side about injuring the coronary arteries. And in fact, there are papers out, particularly from uh, earlier forms of whole breast radiation therapy on the left side, that indeed it can accelerate uh, areas of uh, uh, atherosclerosis and potential myocardial infarctions, heart attacks, if you will, uh, years down the road after the radiation therapy. The other side effects that we get uh, concerned about are things called fat necrosis, particularly when we boost the area where the cancer was. The fatty tissue in that area can die a little bit, become hard, can become painful. Um, that's another side effect. With forms of partial breast radiation therapy, particularly the balloon catheters that we put in, we've ended up in the majority of those patients uh, with a palpable fluid area called a seroma that bothers patients a lot down the road. Gee, my cancer's gone, yet I still feel the lump uh, in that area. So these are sort of the, the bigger overviews of what goes on. If we have to extend the radiation therapy to include what are called the supracavicular lymph nodes up here and the axillary lymph nodes because of uh, a large number of positive lymph nodes, then we worry about lymphedema forming in that arm. Uh, quite frankly, with uh, removing all the lymph nodes and then needing radiation therapy to this area, that instance is probably running 35 to 40 percent. And so therefore, patients need really close monitoring uh, for subclinical lymphedema. Uh, and I'm recommending impedance testing for that. Well, another question then comes, hey, what if I can avoid radiation therapy? And we know that radiation therapy has been an important form of adjunctive treatment of breast cancer, both in situ and invasive, for many years. It is a highly proven track record of lowering the cancer, the chance of the cancer coming back in the breast, and so it's important. But we're also finding that there are going to be patients who, quite honestly, don't need radiation therapy, we're looking at the lower grade cancers and women, let's say, in their 80s may not need radiation therapy. And importantly, in in situ breast cancer, we now have an, a new uh, way of uh, looking at the in situ breast cancer to see if radiation therapy can be 
avoided, meaning not helpful, not needed. And uh, that new uh, uh, test is the Uncotype DX uh, test for in situ breast cancer. So what I've tried to do here in this few minutes is to give you sort of a global overview. Uh, my bottom line always is be working with a multidisciplinary team, be asking important questions about do I need radiation therapy, and if I do need it, what's the benefits, what are the side effects, do I need whole breast, will partial breast work as well. Hopefully this overview will be helpful to you in your decision-making process. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.